the monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. With the 29th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Isaiah Wilson, tackle, Georgia. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith on what might be the best weekend of the year, draft weekend. You think it's the best weekend of the year, Amy? Uh, not might be, is definitely the best weekend of the year. And we're just getting started. And you add players, you like to add those big guys, and man, did the Titans add a big fella. Isaiah Wilson, Georgia Bulldogs, offensive tackle, 6'6 six, six and a half, 350 pounds, and a personality as big as his body. Absolutely, Mike. I had a chance to talk to Isaiah right after he was drafted, and in our short amount of time together, we were able to cover a lot of ground, including why he likes Mike Vrabel so much, and how much swag he plans on bringing to the NFL. Isaiah Wilson is a Tennessee Titan. Isaiah, it's so good to see you. The hat looks good on you. How does it feel to be a Titan? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it feels great. I, I can't wait to, to get there and be a part of the family and just try to help this team win. Going into today, did you have a feeling that by the end of the night you would be a Tennessee Titan? Kind of in my heart, but I, I didn't really have any signs going to it. I, I knew I was a first rounder, and, and as it as it got later in the night, I kind of kind of felt it. In that meeting with Mike Vrabel, what was it that stuck out about that connection that you guys had? What did you bond over? And I, it's kind of a funny story, but we went to shake hands, and, and we kind of just stood there for a second and started <laughs> joking back and forth. And I, I could tell he was he was definitely. Uh, a genuine guy and a, a guy that's about his players for sure. He's a he's a players coach, and I'm definitely happy to be a part of the family and, and ready to work. What is it about the Titans' style of play that appeals to you so much? They beat people up in a run game, and and that's something I, I love to do. I love being physical. I love making other people quit, and and I can't wait to to see how I can better myself in this this organization and and help this team win and then be the best I can really and truly. You're coming into an offensive line that's full of veteran talent. Guys like Taylor Lewan, Roger Saffel, Ben Jones, Dennis Kelly. What can you learn from being infused so quickly into such a group of veteran leaders? Everything. Um, I can't wait to pick every part of the game as to why they do certain things. All, all the little tips and tricks that you learn in probably your fourth year. Uh, when you come into a, a veteran group, you get to you get to learn them your first year, so you get a head start on everybody else. And I, I just can't wait to pick their brains about football. Now you are a right tackle at the University of Georgia, playing in the SEC. Do you feel like that prepared you to play at the next level? Definitely. Um, I, I feel the SEC is the best conference to play football. Um, granted, there, there are a bunch of other power, power five schools that are really really good at football. Don't get me wrong. But I, I take a lot of pride in having played in the SEC. And I, I think it has helped me not only because of the competition, but because of the caliber of coach you have and the people that are coaching you. And they've been in NFL programs and are bringing things back to college that are NFL gyms or little tips and tricks here and there. So I definitely think it helps prepare you for sure. All right. I know in high school you had a SpongeBob backpack. What level of swag can we expect to see out of Isaiah Wilson at the NFL level? <laughs> a ton. I'm, I'm going to try to look as nice as possible. <laughs> Isaiah Wilson, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. We're so excited to have you as part of the Titans family. Thank you for having me and tighten up. John Robinson from the official Titans podcast presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. He took fans' questions last week. We'll show you some highlights. Lance Smith is going to introduce you to a Titan super fan. We'll take a look back to last year's NFL draft in Nashville and a special weekend for the Titans' first-round pick, Jeffrey Simmons. And you are checking in with whom? I'm checking in with Roger Saffold. We're taking time. We're checking in with our Titans family. And we talked about a lot of stuff, Roger and I, so you don't want to miss it.
We're continuing to check in on our Titans family and we are joined now by Roger Saffold. Roger, how are you and your family doing right now? Well, we're actually doing really good. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it has been tough. It has been a change. Um, you know, my wife says all the time that, you know, the, though she hates that this is going on. She loves that she gets to spend extra time with me since so I don't have to go to spring practice right now. So speaking of that, what are you doing to keep your mind and your body right since you're not going back to spring practices and doing some of those routine things that you normally do? Um, just, just trying to stay focused. I mean, you know, we still have notes from the prior years, you know, try to take a look through those. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing I'm trying to do is take care of my body. Uh, making sure that I'm working out is taking away a lot of stress, uh, takes your mind off of the situation. Um, but you know, just definitely want to be here for my, for my wife and kids, want to make sure that they're good. And, uh, for them, you know, I know that we're helping them with school, so we're still staying busy through this time. Well, that's awesome. Now tell me a little bit about Rise Nation, because that's one thing that may not be impacted by this situation as much. Tell me about that and what's going on. Uh, basically what it is, is like we still have streamers. We still have people who are, who can't go to events, but they're having a lot of these contests online. It's a little bit tough because uh, when they're together at an event, there's a, the competition is a little bit more level because you don't have to worry about connection status, who being the host as far as connection is concerned. Uh, but we're still taking care of uh, all of our competitions. Uh, our Gears, we're, our Gears of War team is doing really, really well. And yeah, you know, this is the this is the time that everybody is watching gameplay because nobody can do anything with it at home. That must be nice for you in terms of recruiting new guys and seeing what talent's out there as well, correct? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The crazy thing about the esports world is that everything is kind of a niche. That, you know, it's kind of like a circle that goes around each individual game. Now we know all those circles, which is easy for us, but every time there's somebody new up and coming, it's usually the pros who are able to find them and then we kind of settle in to see if they're ready or not. Now you're a guy who seems like you have a good balance, you know how to keep yourself on track throughout whatever adversity comes your way. You're a veteran player, you know. What advice do you have for some of the younger guys who may not have established that balance yet and are having a hard time navigating this time where things are a little bit different? Uh, things are a little bit different. I remember something happening, you know, similar uh, when we had the lockout back in 2011. I was a rookie going into my first off season, so it was weird not going to spring practice or anything that I was used to the year before. Uh, the difference is now being able to stay home. But I think that the biggest thing that I could tell rookies is just to make sure that they stay mentally sharp and make sure that you take care of your body because those are the things that's going to help you when you get back. Um, I think that constant communication with your coaches is huge. Um, you know, I talked to Coach Braves. I talked to uh, Coach Carter. Uh, I've, I've talked to everybody. So, I mean, I think that that's just keeping us in the loop so there's no surprises when it's time to come back. What message do you have for Titans fans who might be watching this right now? Um, my message is, is, you know, the, the grind still hasn't stopped. Uh, we're, we're definitely working. Uh, all the players are in contact with one another. And, you know, we're trying to go and chase the championship again. That's our main focus. If, if it comes a time where we can't practice right now, uh, the best thing that we can do is just constantly try to better ourselves until it's time to get together. Roger Saffold, thanks <laughs> for taking some time to sit down and chat with us. Oh, thank you guys. Amy and I welcome you back to Titans All Access and we welcome Lance Smith to the program, our friend. You, so you didn't quit after week one. We're glad you're back. I'm in it. I'm in it. I don't care how we do this. Zoom, put me on the moon. As long as we can do this, I'm in. <laughs> That's good. And you are introducing us to Titans super fans. This one has a special relationship with Reggie Wayne. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. Yeah, special relationship with Reggie Wayne. Yeah. No, I've been talking with fans, getting excited, of course, about the draft, but just the upcoming season. Getting to know everybody, we've seen this guy. His name is uh, Matt Keaton. We've seen him a few times on some fan prompts. He wears flashy suits and all sorts of Titans gear. But, yeah, he had a little um, one-on-one -on -one conversation with <laughs> Reggie Wayne at last year's draft. You might remember it, and I talked to him about it. But right now, uh, here's my conversation with who I know, DJ Fast Nasty.
You are DJ Fast Nasty. Where does the name come from? And are you an actual DJ? Tell the people. I mean, I used to play in bands and stuff back in the day. So we used to have like a little like project that me and my buddy would do where I would like run Ableton and play like pre-recorded loops and he would play keyboard and then I would play like the drums with it. And then me and him came up with the name a long time ago. How long you been a fan and how do you do it from Knoxville? And do you know how many miles you've traveled to and fro going to games. Man, it was rough last year. I got to be a fan really when the team moved here because you know, I finally got my own football team. But being in Knoxville, we didn't really travel up to any of the games for a long time. I actually got my first job in Morristown, Tennessee at a little AM radio station coming in on Sundays and just operating the board for the games. And uh, that is where all my love for the Titans came from. You've been rocking it at the tailgates, DJ in there, you know, the yeah. whole busting with the boys thing. It's been so cool to go from having such a small group of Titans fans that I did stuff with to just feeling like a full blown, huge family. We're all watching the draft last year in Nashville. Reggie Wayne of the Colts takes the stage and he's got to talk some smack to the Tennessee faithful, but you, you, DJ Fast Nasty, Matt Keaton, had our back. Talk about the back and forth between you and Reggie Wayne. So Reggie comes out and I'm like, oh my gosh, Reggie Wayne. He's like one of the best wide receivers of all time, you know? Uh, it's just so cool. And then literally like the first words out of that dude's mouth is, we're back, we're back, AFC South. We mean business, you know, and then, what are you going to, you can't just come out into Nashville and say that, you know, you have to be ready to be booed. Man, it's been great talking with you. Great catching up with you. Appreciate it, mom. We love you. Look, look at that. Sporting the Amy <laughs> Adams Strunk mom shirt. I love it. That's a way yeah. to go out. DJ Fast Nasty, you've been fan zoned. Thank you so much. DJ Fast Nasty. I'll tell you what, that's a name. Mike, I thought that was your name. I um, thought I thought I had it trademarked. I guess I didn't. I'm confused. <laughs> Lance, it was so good to see you. Good to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. Guys, there's a lot more Titans All Access coming up, including a check-in with the general manager when he made an appearance on the OTP, the official Titans podcast. Stick around. Amy Wells and I really enjoy hosting the official Titans podcast. And we do that each week. And we really enjoy taking your questions at TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Sometimes a special guest comes by to answer your questions like last week. Of course, Titans General Manager John Robinson was on the OTP taking questions from the OT people. Here are some of our favorite moments. Now, Matt, using hashtag OTPQ, asked, what is the best thing a prospect can say to you during a pre-draft meeting? Probably when we ask them, um, what do you envision your role being on, on, on the team next year? I don't want them to come in and say, well, I want to be a rookie all-pro. I mean, the personal goals are good. We all have personal goals. But I think when a player says, I, I want to come in and help the team, and whatever role that you guys asked me to play, I want to be a good teammate. I want to get to know my teammates and I want to win. And I think when they can then talk in and kind of team goals about helping the team and being a good teammate and winning, that's the most important thing. That's more important to me. Um, it's more important to our fans than some rookie, you know, maybe being rookie of the year, but you don't win enough games to get in, in the to playoffs. That's, that's, you know, that's good to have, that, to have those personal goals, but, you know, our goal is to try to work to try to, you know, win the division, get in the tournament, win a championship. Will James asked, how is the league participating in your war room setup? Are they attempting to have all of the teams set up the same way with the same equipment? Great question. No, I think it's, it's been a, up to the team to kind of how, how they're going to set up the particular, how they're going to work through um, and, and manage the draft. I'm looking at it now. We have a camera. Uh, in here that will have a feed uh, to to you know to the league and to the networks that they'll be able to click over and and see me when when we're on the clock. Um, and I've got a I've got an eight pound bag of M and M's that they sent. Hold on one second. Give me two seconds. Wait, wait a minute. You we have. We want to see this. That's not. He's lying. Maybe it's not exactly eight pounds, but it's a. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. M and M's and they're Titan blue colors with uh, Titans. <laughs> 
the Titan sword on there. There's a fireball on there. Oh man, I've been proven. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That is incredible. We're going to get some good players, and I'm going to have a sugar rush probably by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I said that I wasn't going to ask any more hashtag OTPQ questions for a minute, and I lied because about five people, including Bonnie, have asked, can we order those Titans m and <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no idea, but if I, if I have any left over, maybe I can send one at a time. There's got to be at least... <laughs> Let's see... A single M&M, &M, everyone gets one M&M. 30, 32 pieces and there's uh, 80 servings per container. That's several. I mean, I got a map <laughs> quick in my head. I think that's about 2,400 M&Ms or so, right? That's Still pretty good. 2,500, yeah. Wow. 80 times 30, hold on, I'll use my calculator. Thank God. 2,560. 2,560. Wow. Did you get that, Mike Keith? Did. Nice in job, Cotton. <laughs> I gotta say, Amy, I think my favorite part was the eight pound bag of M&Ms. That was memorable. I think it would be my favorite part if that eight pound bag of M&Ms was in my house, not J-Rob's house. I get it. Too far away. Speaking of memorable, how about draft weekend for all Titans fans a year ago in Nashville? And it was especially memorable for the Titans first round pick, Big Jeff. Jeffrey Simmons. When we come back, we take a look back at his weekend in 2019. Draft weekend with Jeffrey Simmons on Titans All Access. Amy, every year, you know, I love the draft party. It's one of my favorite things that we do as the Tennessee Titans. This year, virtual draft, so virtual draft party. And man, was it star-studded. Mike, Keith, I'll tell you what, Nashville continues to prove that they know how to throw a party, whether it's in person or online, we can do it all. And the amount of people that came out from actors to musicians to comedians, I mean, we had everything. It was magnificent. Let's take a look at the sights and sounds from the 2020 virtual draft party for the Titans. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tennessee Titans virtual draft party. I am Lance Smith and tonight is nothing but fun, okay? Because we've all been cooped up in our houses and we're ready to get this thing on the road. Look at all these beautiful people, Eddie, that are joining us here. It's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I'm trying to go through all the screens to see everybody, man. This is awesome how we can virtually come together and still celebrate our football season that I still believe we're going to have and celebrate the newest addition to the Titans family. So it's exciting. So I got to know, uh, you're watching teams pick your position. Do you do you hold a chip on your shoulder or look at those teams when you're playing them, when you see them on the schedule? Well, for me, yeah, that's something I definitely always did. The guys that went before me were pretty legit. So, I, you know, I was just happy to be drafted in the first round. That actually was the longest um, NFL draft to date. First round, first round, I should say. So talk to me about your experience, Mariani. Oh man, talk about a long day, Keith, man. <laughs> Sitting there waiting to the seventh round. <laughs> I just wanted a shot, man. I just wanted to hear my name. And when I finally got the call from Two Tone Blue, man, was one of the greatest feelings I've ever had in my entire life. Tank, how'd you feel about your night? I wasn't really tripping. I mean, I had cats like Ed Reed and Roy Williams and all these cats in my draft, man. I mean, once I did get selected by the Titans, I grew up watching Steve McNair in college. Like, I used to go to games at all corners. So once I got to Tennessee and I knew I was playing with Mac 9, it was all good. I have to take a moment to fanboy here because Eddie's my man. Eddie's my favorite player of all time. Like, all time, all time. All time. I've been, uh... I've been a fan of this franchise for, what, 30 years? So you were one of, what, six fans in the, in the stands in Houston in 96? Six fans. I was at the last game. I want to say that was the Chris Chandler swan song, maybe. It was. Uh, like, do you, Ryan, want a particular position pick? You know, there's always something that you're kind of looking for, but at the same time, I just try to take a step back. Hey, these guys put hours and hours, thousands of hours into to finding the right fit. Uh, not only for, for a position, but for our team. So um, just really trust in the organization, trust in, in the guys that are, that are devoting their whole year basically to um, setting up their board and then get ready for this draft. Watching a game and I was sitting on my couch and one team kicked off the other team and I went to go get something to drink out of the refrigerator. And before I could get back, the guy ran 100 yards and I missed him. So that guy ran 100 yards before I could get three to maybe four yards. 
and he had 11 people trying to tackle him. I don't even have an ottoman. It was wide open, <laughs> and I couldn't make it back. I've been sober, because there ain't no hangover like you, girl. And baby, can you come over? Always find those words at the bottom of your food. Let's have a big old tighten up toast. Well, that virtual draft party, that was a lot of fun. Well done by a lot of people. And thanks to everybody, Amy, who chose to take part. Absolutely. A party's a party, no matter where it takes place, in person or online. I'm so glad we continued the tradition with you getting to be the first one to visit with the first round pick, Isaiah Wilson. Because every year since you've been with the ball club, you've gotten to do that. And last year, you got to spend some special time with big Jeff himself, Jeffrey Simmons, right after he was picked. Absolutely. We actually had to go and retrieve Jeffrey Simmons and bring him back to Nashville. Such a cool experience bringing Jeffrey Simmons home to his new team. So as we leave you on this edition of Titans All Access, let's share a little bit of that memory. Big Jeff's first trip to Nashville. Thanks for joining us for the program, and we'll see you next time. Jeffrey. Hi, I'm Amy Wells. Welcome to the Titans. We're so excited you're here. Your chariot awaits. We're going to fly over the stadium. We're going to the Country Music Hall of Fame right now. These people out here have been Titan season ticket members since before you were born. That's crazy. They have no idea you're here. I'm counting on you right now because in his first appearance as a Tennessee Titan, Congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you guys for sure. You don't have to thank us, man. You be you. Yes, sir. And, uh, come to work every day. This will be your new home right here for a long time. Yeah.